Okay guys, Brothers Williams here. We are just about to go walk into the theater for The Last Jedi. Um, so, we don't have terribly high expectations. We'll see what happens. Um, we hope it's good. So, we will get back to you guys as soon as we get home to give you what our opinion is of the new Last Jedi movie. See you later. See you in a minute. What's up everyone? The Brothers Williams here with our review of The Last Jedi that we just saw. Alright, so first thing we're going to discuss. Did it meet the expectations of our previous video? Kyle? Uh, short answer, exceeded my expectations to a great degree. That's because my expectations were about this tall. <laughs> um, yeah. Really good film. I'm very happy with the direction that Ryan Johnson took with this film. Mm -hmm. I feel that this is the film we Star Wars fans deserved um, to bring the Star Wars uh, intellectual property back. Mm -hmm. What did you think? What was it, did it meet your expectations? It blew most of my expectations out of the water. Um, it was very good. Way better than The Force Awakens. I think we both agree The Force Awakens is the weakest of the Star Wars films. And honestly, if you could cut it down to like 20 minutes... As a trailer for this movie. Yeah, and that would be enough. You don't really need all the stuff they had in it. Yeah. It's just an introduction to the new characters. Which, for this one, there was a lot more character development. Good character moments. Um... A so, uh, couple of the new characters they brought in were really good. Um, yeah. Let's see. The music is a big problem because, once again, they did not let John Williams do his thing. Yeah. We had lots of iconic music used, which is okay, but I would have liked something new. Yeah, I Something agree. that says, this is the song that is the last Jedi movie. You know, kind of like how Duel of the Fates was episode one, or... Um, Battle of the Heroes was episode three. We had something there that said, this is this movie. Mm -hmm. But we just didn't have that. Yeah. So that was a problem. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I think we're both very pleased mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we're wearing our robes. So you could say that we're Star Wars fans again? Always have been. Always have been. Never It's just stopped. a case of... If I don't love it, then I don't watch. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know what else we can get into without talking about spoilers. Um, uh, uh, the origins. We can talk oh, yeah. about that. So, this movie um, doesn't answer questions. Well, I guess is this... It answered is, a lot is, is of questions. Spo is the spoilers in? Because it's telling them what they're not going to see in the movie. No, because that's not what they're trying to stay away from. But by telling them what they're not going to see, it also tells them what they're going to No. I think we, we're okay with this one. Okay, if you don't want to know anything about the movie, then stop This is where to stop. Um, if you're okay with being told what's not in the movie, keep watching for a little bit. Um, so they didn't go into the origins of the First Order or the Resistance, mm -hmm. um, which to me, um, is still the main problem I have with the new Star Wars trilogy, because we don't understand where the First Order is being financed from, where their manufacturing is coming from, and they are a massive military force to be reckoned with. I mean, they had the wherewithal to be able to hollow out a planet and turn it into a star-killing, system-destroying superweapon, and we have no idea where they got that money from. And not just the money, but all the materials to do yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, you could kind of mine the planet and turn those materials in, but it Maybe. would take a long time. 30 years is probably, probably not, not enough, enough to do that, um, so that's a problem. Uh, 
and the resistance, the understanding of where they come from to begin with, is not there again. And of um, course, why the Republic's not backing them? Yeah, why why isn't the Republic backing them? Why isn't the why didn't the rebellion turn into just the regular standard Republic army, or at least get integrated into the Republic army? Um, that still bothers me as to like because these things to me are foundational into understanding the conflict. Um, if they had just said like okay, there were some bankers and financiers who were making tons of money when the Empire was around, and they have financed the First Order to try and keep that Imperial money flowing, okay, that's all I want to know. That's fine. And if you said the Republic was in negotiations with the First Order to you know, broker a peace deal or something, and that's why the re the resistance isn't the rebellion, but it's also not the republic. You know, that they are kind of a group of fringe outsiders who are fighting for what they think is the right thing and end up being the right thing to keep fighting the First Order when the republic gets blown up, and that's why they're on their last legs. That would, that would to me, solve... 90% of my problems with the new Star Wars yeah, um, that Disney has done so far. Yeah, and it's those things that, while it didn't detract from The Last Jedi, it would have been nice if they had been there, and it would have helped explain a few more things that we wouldn't be constantly asking ourselves while we're watching these. Yeah. So, um, as far as non-spoilers go... This is it. This is your final warning. We're going into heavy spoiler territory discussions. So if you have seen it, this is what you're looking for. If not, please leave through the exits right now. Just there, I, I will not take any of your guilt to be placed upon me. It is, I wash my conscience clean. If, uh, if you continue watching and we spoil it, because that's, your that's on your pro that's on you. That's your problem. We're gonna talk about it now. So, all right. Here we go. Okay. What did you like that they did new? Um, I really, I mean, I really enjoyed the direction of the whole movie as in general. Um, I loved the character development uh, for mm. especially Finn. Yeah, he had a big. He, he had a great bigger. character arc, um, continuing on from. The Force Awakens. Loved that character arc. Um, I thought Rey had good um, character development. Yeah, probably the first um, time I, I felt like she really had any. Yeah, and I feel that the way they delved into the mystic side of the Force was something that we have not seen um, in many, at all, of the Star Wars movies. Um, you They've get, done it in the TV got hints, shows. You've got hints of it. They did it in the TV shows, but I loved that they went into some of the mystic parts. Um, when mm -hmm. Ray goes into that dark side cavern, I was like, oh. Yeah, that was some pretty intense stuff. And then the force visions they were yeah, all the, having. Yeah, the force visions, the, the force connections, where people are connected across space through the force. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really cool. Um that that was going on, I was really digging that because I really like um, kind of that mystic side of things mm -hmm. of what's going on here, you know. Yeah, that so was that was those are really those are things good. that I really enjoyed about the about the movie. Um, um, well, of course, we were all kind of afraid that this was going to be another Empire Strikes Back. It was not by any stretch of the imagination. There was a little tiny bit towards the end where it was like, oh, this looks sort of familiar, but they didn't stay with that. Yeah, there, there were kind of elements of um, Empire Strikes Back kind of interwoven, but it was also very, very different. Extremely um, different. It was not like... It didn't feel like watching one of the previous Star Wars films. This was something yeah, I, 
all on its own. Yeah. The the thing to me that resonated as with the uh, Empire Strikes Back is Rey and Luke off on their own, kind of doing their own thing. Her, you know, she's getting her own training, but not really. Sort of. Um, well, Three lessons. Uh, yeah. While the other one, everyone else is off doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. So, like, there, there are elements, but it's not, um, you know, uh, the Empire Strikes Back, and then they go off, and uh, Luke, or, you know, whoever it is, goes and finds a somebody in a swamp, and, you know, they go off to a cloud city and get apprehended, and then he ab they abandon their training. Um, there's a lot that's very different from, mm -hmm. from those beats and that kind of a story arc. Um, <sighs> sorry, sorry, had some technical difficulties with losing camera space, and then the battery died for the camera. So, we're back, trying one more time to continue where we're at. Um, you were so talking we're, about Finn's arc. Yeah, so Finn, following, the, yeah, he's running away all the time. That's kind of what he's doing. Um, but when he's with Rose, they're going about um, on their gallivanting. And he starts seeing something that we're fighting for. Mm -hmm. um, and that by the end of the film, we see he um, isn't just running away from the First Order, but he's willing to die for something he believes in. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's a really powerful character arc to see that they go from being cowardly and running away to everyone else runs away, and he's the last guy standing, waiting, running to fight. Willing to give his life. Yeah. To like, I was ready for him to bite the dust. Yeah, I was like, oh, man, he is gonna, he's gonna die here, and like, sad, yes, but like, he had a strong character arc, and if that's where his character arc ended, that would have been a heroic character arc. Mm -hmm. Would have been a great resolution for his character. Yeah. And well, I'm glad that he didn't die. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm excited to see where things go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, fantastic story arc mm -hmm. for the character. Yeah, uh, we were discussing it off camera while we were waiting for the battery to charge. Um, some of the other characters uh, that we felt were either very weakly done or just really didn't belong in the movie at all. Um, Poe, his uh, his character arc is pretty weak. Like um, he's got his, you know, devil may cry attitude that he just kind of does things that he feels is right, which isn't a bad thing, but for this particular movie, it was a case of more, your plan didn't work, and the old people, as it were, were right to do this idea the whole time. Yeah, I mean, he's he has a good understanding of tactics, but he doesn't understand campaigns or strategy because sure they kill the fleet destroying weapon but they also basically destroyed the fleet in doing it so it's like, like two-thirds of the fleet was gone yeah I think. two thirds of the fighters were gone all of their bombers were done for so it's like well what's what was even the point of doing that if you're gonna lose everything destroying it so like yes he destroyed it but at uh, what cost? Yeah. You know? And then at the end, he had a bit of character development where it was, you know, li learn to live to fight another day sort of thing, which gives him the potential to become a good leader. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me shows that, yes, he can win a fight, but now he's getting strategy and can become a real strong leader in the resistance. Um which I think is good potential for the next film. Um, Let's see, someone we didn't feel has really any purpose in the movies except to be a plot device is Maz. Maz, yeah. Like, she doesn't do anything beyond telling the characters something important that they need to know. And that's really about it. Yeah. 
So she's one of those things that, well, it's necessary to have. She's not any way integral to the story because, you know, of who she is. Yeah, I don't. I don't think she's a strong character at all. Mm -hmm. um, there's no explanation as to why she's so knowledgeable about the Force or anything really. Um, it's just kind of, I don't know, I find her character annoying. Um, speaking of annoying... Oh yeah. Um, the just, real Mary Sue of the movie. Is that it? Sure, yeah. Let's go with there. Uh, okay. The real Mary Sue of the movie, BB-8. Like, come on dude. He, he's, it's just way too convenient, the things he does. Everything he does is just like so convenient. It's like, it, at the beginning where he's like, you know, fixing the shorting stuff. With like 12 stuff. arms? Yeah, coming out of one main branch, and it's like, how does that even, that doesn't even look physically possible, mm -hmm. Then I'm just going to shove my head in it and it works? Yeah, that, that, that bugged me. Yeah, and like everything he does. Like, he just happens to have this disc-shaped launcher for the credit the coins, chips that yeah. some dude shoved in him earlier. Yeah. Uh, he can splice a uh, chicken walker. Like, yeah. what? It's like, a two-man vehicle. Yeah, and he's just like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. And then and his whole design, I mean, it's, it's probably it's something... physically possible. We had Neil deGrasse Tyson explain that it wouldn't work like that. So, mm -hmm. like, I don't know. He's just annoying at this point. Yeah. That, like, he always figures out a way to do it, and it doesn't even make sense 90% of the time. But BB-8. He's the cute droid. Yeah. Mm. He's, his head is magnetically attached to the orb. That rolls around. The orb rolls underneath him, but it's supposed to be magnetically attached. I'm just confused as to, is it attached? Is it floating above it? If it's repulsed, yet attracted to the body, how is that, how does that work? Magic. The answer is always magic. It's magic. I mean, unless there's like, um, what do you call them? Casters underneath? Like ball bearings underneath his skull? Yeah, but that, that didn't happen because his head came off yeah, we and saw. it just randomly floated back on. Well, we, was... saw, well, we saw that there were no ball bearings yeah, underneath. Yeah, there were no ball which bearings. Which would allow it to spin and his head to stay up top, I guess. But they didn't have that. Yeah, so, yeah. BB-8, real Mary Sue of the new Star Wars. Everything he does, he just works out. Yeah. Um, one thing that I did find tedious was the constant running away, constant... Oh, yeah. the rebellion's on its last legs again. And again. And again. And again. And over, over and over again. And they're a lot of time spent out in empty space where nothing really happened. They're just kind of running and no nothing happened. Yeah, it just got kind of tedious at, at that point. That's, like, even though the movie is long, that was, was what made it feel long. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ugh. but I mean, overall, I think I would give this. Um, I would give it a really good score. Uh, we haven't really come up with any formal scoring system, so you um, can do whatever. On, on a scale of a lightsaber to um, a pod racing, this is definitely a solid Kyber crystal. Pod racer. What even? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I, I give it uh, 12 spaghettis out of orange. Yeah. So, definitely a must-see on that uh, scale. Um, yeah. This... I, I think that this... The Last Jedi is the Star Wars movie we wanted. That we deserved. Leave, you leave the theater feeling, all right, this is good. Yeah. I felt good after leaving the theater. Not excited about J.J. Abrams directing the next film. Yeah. That leaves me very apprehensive. Yeah. Especially after having something so good come yeah. out of this, finally. Yeah. 
but we'll see. Yeah, who knows? Anyway. Um, so let us know what you see. think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, Nothing else we want to talk about? I mean, we talked about a lot off screen. Uh, a lot of good artistic choices by the director, Ryan Johnson, who's done not a whole lot of directing so far from what we've seen. Yeah. I mean, he's done Breaking Bad for a few years, um, some other movies that we've never heard of. But, like, he'll go, like, five years between movies and stuff, so it's... But I, like, I think that this really put him on the map. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's a reason he's got three more Star Wars movies, uh, his own trilogy, basically. So I'm excited to see what he does. Yeah. Because he did a great job. Fantastic job. So this brings some hope to the Disney Star Wars. But as you know, we're still apprehensive. Yeah. It, it sparked hope. Yeah. <laughs> it sparked hope. As this would be has heavily in its theme mm -hmm. is hope. But we'll see what happens and with the next one. Crazy Yodas. Yeah. <laughs> crazy Yoda. Yep. Even in death. Even in death, he's still crazy. Ah, uh, man. Anyway, um, I can't think of anything else, really. It's all, we kinda hit it's all we've got for you now. Yeah. So that, as they say, is, is that. that.